those who carried it to the point of throwing rocks and doing the racial epithets, uh, spitting on women and children at the landings, putting pipe bombs on boat landings over by Solon Springs and going to federal prison because of it. Uh, there were lines that were crossed there that the federal court very quickly recognized that the issue was not about a concern over the fish. There was something else going on here. Please, no racial slurs, violence, or any confrontation with the government. Well, no question, bigotry was part of the equation, but I think the economy was also a factor. The Northwoods is a very uh, 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 precarious uh, place to live. I mean, the, the, the job market up here is is oftentimes uh, not quite as good as it is in other places. You have to understand that Wisconsin as a state went into a very deep recession in 8081. And in fact, we had two recessions back to back. It was a double dip recession. Now you place that over northern Wisconsin, which has always had a seasonal economy, uh, always um, been challenged economically, and now one of the key industries, tourism, is, is going to take a hit because the rest of the state and Chicago and the Twin Cities is in a really deep recession. A lot of this started out by people that were concerned about the resource, but it wasn't too difficult then for them to engage people that were in the business community, saying what, what this could do to your businesses. So it, it sort of played into the economic aspects. The thing that is keeping some of those counties going, Vilas and Oneida would be examples, would be you have had in the last 15, 20, 25 years, and this is what's different, a lot of major second home, uh, vacation home kind of activity. But you have this strange dichotomy of, the, of that part of the state, in many cases, being property rich because of homes that are highly valued on lake property and income poor because the folks that own those homes aren't there year-round and then you're left with the, the year-round population which is getting older, having fewer kids, a lot of school districts up there under real economic challenge uh, as, as the population begins to shrink. So from a state aid perspective, while they're losing kids, they're looking richer in terms of the state aid formula and therefore get less state aid which pushes more of their costs onto the property tax and remember the north is not income rich it tends to be income poor so you have this strange dichotomy between property rich income poor and the state aid formula doesn't recognize that dichotomy it recognizes property wealth the people who live there year round were tied to the tourist economy which was changing in ways that people didn't recognize at the time. Biking, golfing, uh, uh, non-user uh, people, they, not everybody fished. Uh, you couldn't expect mom and the kids to sit around the resort for a week uh, while dad went fishing. You saw shorter stays. And so for those resorts that were not responding to those new demographics, it was very easy to, to look at an issue like the reemergence re of tribes and the exercise of their rights as a cause, a cause and effect for their economic woes. We rely a lot on tourism um, up here in the Northwoods. And, uh, and lack of information. People had, uh, I think, was a, was a major role. Because when the information first started coming out about native spearfishing and, and, the, and the treaty issues in general, the, the misconception was that native people were going to be uh, um, just taking whatever they could in, in, as, in as much as they could fish-wise off in every lake that we went on, that, that there was just no limit. Okay. Well, that's safe. Good. See, we got, we get one allowed over 24 inches, one between 20 and 24, and then all the rest got to be 20 or less. In the early to mid-80s, the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources uh, uh, in 
departments of natural resources from other states were beginning to understand that for a whole variety of reasons, uh, the fish in the lake uh, and the other natural resources were being stressed uh, by factors that we were just beginning to understand, whether it was shoreline development, uh, perhaps at that point it was even some climate change. Uh, there certainly was very intensive harvest pressure. In the 90s, we saw a lot of small cabins being purchased and then converted into McMansions. Uh, we saw a higher density of houses around the shoreline, bigger houses, more erosion from construction of those buildings, more removal of trees so people clear out the trees so they have a better view of the lake. They put in the lawns, they uh, may use fertilizer which can then run off into the lake or, or herbicides which can run off into the lake. And they begin to change the shoreline to make it more convenient for their use. And all of those things remove fish habitat. Uh, everyone who uh, fishes uh, knows that fish hang out around fallen logs and, uh, and, and weeds, weed, the weed line. There have been a lot of environmental changes, to be sure, in these lakes. Uh, that isn't to say certainly in, in localized areas. There, the pressure is pretty immense, especially for fish like walleye, which spawns in shallow water and, and relies on clean gravel. Um, as it's spawning substrate, if you have, as lakeshore development increases, you certainly have more runoff in these things. And you know, this was certainly developing through the 1970s and 1980s, but it's it's only escalated um, in the past 20 years. So the more popular lakes were being really harvested pretty heavily, and uh, it was being recognized through the fish surveys that more regulation was necessary on state anglers. Uh, to bring back the harvest within a sustainable limit. The state had not started doing the regulation to lower the bank limits. It was coming in the very near future, it had to. And the, the resource held up, you know, was holding up under, under that sort of pressure, but as travel uh, spearfishing began, then um, the state began looking at other methods um, of managing angler, um, the intensity of angler harvest. Um, so we started using things uh, like minimum size limits. So from a no minimum, we changed to a 15 inch minimum size limit. The Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources had this notion of walleye 2000, where uh, the department predicted that by the year 2000, the demand for Wisconsin's walleyes, especially in the north, would outstrip the ability of the natural resources to provide, uh, the, to, to meet those expectations in a sustainable way. And so at that time in the uh, Wisconsin's history, uh, the department was re-examining the overall management of fisheries in Wisconsin, particularly in the north. And so there again, once the tribes enter the scene, begin exercising their rights, using a method that currently is prohibited for the most part under state law, uh, and taking the fish at a time when state season otherwise is closed, there again, one, it, it, it's very easy to find what could be called a scapegoat. Well, I think that ultimately what turned the tide was, uh, was the fact that, that we were able to get this, uh, these issues into the courtrooms. And I think sovereignty and the treaties were black and white. There's, there's just no way around them. And the fact that they were violated for all these hundreds of years was very, very evident in the, in, under close scrutiny.